Yes. Right. Quick video. Uh, probably more because of something I'm planning to do. Uh, but I thought I'd start on the subject now. Um, steroids in the brain. Um, now, there's been some research, uh, especially rat studies, on the effect of nandrolones, nor 19s, trembolone, DECA, on the brain. And there's been some argument that animal studies don't translate into humans, etc., etc., etc. Now, it's something that I'm trying to do a little bit of research into at the moment. I'm planning on speaking to three individuals, two that have had a negative and one that's had a positive impact from running nandrolones. Um, uh, and how it's affected them psychologically. Now the problem with all this is that if you look at this from brass tacks point of view, if you got a vessel and filled it with a yellowy brown oil and then told someone to inject that and it would make them massive, the vast populace of normal so-called sane individuals I'll tell you to fuck off. Why the fuck would they do it? it? Sounds crazy. Yet, as steroid users, we do. So there is a strong argument that a lot of steroid users already have psychological issues of some form or another. Now, these may be body image issues. These may be confidence issues. They could be even more deep rooted than that. But the fact is that. The base root action of taking steroids isn't really that of someone who is complete within themselves. So in that, do these drugs cause changes to one's psyche or do these drugs just reveal issues that are already existing? Hard to say definitively. And obviously the big problem we have is we can't really test. However, there have been a few weird studies on humans. Now, there was one, and this was taken on women going through hormonal gender change. So they were taking high levels of testosterone to uh, effectively have a sex change. And while they were doing this, their brains were monitored. Now, what was found that the testosterone actually caused their brains to change physically in shape but also in content they found a reduction in grey matter in the areas that deal with language now this is pretty major there were 18 individuals that were tested and it was found that the areas that used for language processing grey matter was vastly reduced as a result their ability of language understanding was reduced now you add that with studies on rats that have shown brain cell damage short-term memory recall damage um, and then you just look at the the general side effects you take Tretin. How many people complain of a disassociation, uh, a lack of feeling to things, or of very vivid and very mad and insane dreams? So these drugs obviously affecting your brain chemistry to some degree because it's causing very vivid and very weird dreams, sometimes quite violent in nature. Um, so you've got to think, you know, I am seeing some evidence of these drugs messing with my brain. Now we know that nandrolones affect the D1 dopamine receptor. We don't know really how by what extent this translates to within people. But I have seen people that have had issues with depression that when they started taking DECA, they've had improvements in mood and some of these have been quite dramatic. Now, is that the chemical or is that the fact that they've just come back on cycle? And there's a psychological effect because they believe these drugs are going to improve who and what they are. You know, a lot of our moods and a lot of our psyches 
are affected by how we feel about ourselves, how we perceive ourselves. You know, if we feel we look good and we feel that we look the way we want to look, then we're happier. We're more positive. We're more positive and more outgoing. We're more outspoken. Possibly more adventurous. Definitely more confident. In the same way, if we don't like the way we appear physically, and we feel fat or we feel weak or we feel small, then we'll be slightly more reserved. We won't be wanting to be the centre of attention and we'll want to hide in the background. So it's difficult to really say without doubt at what point this is chemically induced and at what point this is psychologically induced. We know that low depression, no testosterone causes depression. So does that mean that high testosterone can cause elation? And if so, by what axes is this happening? We do know that, that uh, low-dose testosterone has been used in males to improve cognitive function. So does that mean that high doses are going to improve it more, or does it mean the opposite? There definitely are links. That I have no doubt. And I am a great believer in that the Nandrolone's links are positive, probably more negative than positive. But so much of our psyches and our personalities and, and the way we feel is linked with the way we look. Or the way we perceive ourselves anyway. That, that it, it's difficult to really say what's doing what. You know, I mean, sometimes we haven't even changed to the outside world. We're in our heads. We've gained two stone of fat overnight. Oh, we've lost a stone of muscle overnight. We've all had it. Fat days, small days, weak days. Sometimes this can come from the fact that we've been in the gym. We've not got a very good pump or we've felt weak. That could be from a million and one things. Not slept very well. Not eating very well. Underlying virus coming through. We might be getting ill. I know that a day or two days before I actually get ill with anything, I'm as weak as a kid in the gym. And every time I'm like, what's wrong with me? Why am I so weak? And then a day later, I feel like absolute crap and I'm ill and I'm in bed. So, you know, uh, but I know when I have a crap workout, it does affect the way I perceive myself. I don't feel as big. I don't feel as strong. And therefore, it does affect my psyche and my confidence. I think as the older we get, the more in tune we get with ourselves and the more we accept ourselves for what we really are. Um, and these physical attributes become, to a degree, less important. I don't think they ever become unimportant. I mean, um, due to my work schedule at the moment, I've had another outbreak of spots on my face. I don't like it. It does bother me, I am conscious of it. But not to a point where it will affect me confidence-wise or, or in my ability to do something. Where in the past it may have done. And I think we're all like that, you know what I mean? If we perceive ourselves as being ugly or being fat or being small or being weak or whatever it is, we won't be the same person we would be if we felt big, strong, good physique, however it was. And there's no doubt that when you go on cycle, your perception of yourself can change, even if anything physically doesn't actually happen. But I do think it's worth bearing in mind that there is mounting evidence that these drugs can definitely have effect. Now, we've always stated that roid rage doesn't exist. It's a load of bollocks. It just reveals the inner person. Maybe there is something to it. We know that um, Halo was um, originally designed as a veterinary drug and it was stopped because it turned animals very aggressive. Doesn't necessarily mean it translates to humans. Now, personally, I've never had an issue with aggression whilst being on cycle. But I know some people that have. Um, now, one thing being on cycle does do is it improves um, white matter. And white matter uh, is involved in our reactions, our um, responses. Increase white matter and you'll be more reactionary. 
Now you can see how that can be perceived of aggression, whereas if someone says something normally you'd let it slide, increasing white matter, you then react to that trigger a lot quicker. So you can see how that would be perceived as aggression. Is it aggression? Or is it just that you're responding quicker? You know, the more I'm involved with this world, uh, and I still preach that, that steroids don't cause aggression for the simple reason is that for the mass populace and the mass, the large percentage of cases, it doesn't. But I do believe it does affect our brain chemistry and I do believe it does have some cases a permanent effect on our brain chemistry. I have seen people with severe anxiety and paranoia issues. Now in the past I always believed that these were brought on not so much by the chemicals but by the fact that the chemicals have become crooks. They have become the support for this person's weaknesses, um, low self-esteem, low confidence or whatever. And thus when those drugs were removed, they became paranoid and very anxious about the fact that they were no longer on that support mechanism. I'm beginning to think that maybe there's a little bit more at play in this. Now obviously this isn't going to be everybody, it isn't going to affect everybody, but I can't help thinking that these things are doing more to us than we realise in some cases. That's not to say that, oh shit, run out, panic, never take steroids again because it's going to turn you into a nutter, because I don't think that's the case at all. But I do think long-term and heavy use of certain drugs, particularly TREP, could have more long-term issues. Um, I will be continuing on this, this theme in another video in a week or so once I've spoken to a few people that I want to interview. And in that case, I'm going to give you some hard facts based on these people's individual experiences. So it's not scientific facts, it's not a proper test, it's not a proper study, there's no double blind and there's no controls or anything like that. <clears throat> but it will be an analysis of what these people went through and in relation to what drugs they were taking at the time. But the problem I think we'll find is that when you speak to any bodybuilder, if they're truly honest with you, you'll start finding some deep-seated neurosis is in there. Um, but we'll see. It's definitely something I am very, very interested in. And if people are brave enough, please comment on your own experiences that you think may have affected you below this video. Or if you'd rather do it in more confidence, I'd be very interested to hear your experiences via email. Dave at Crosslands, C-R-O-S. L A N D S dot org dot UK. Okay, that's it for now. So I'm going to get off and I'll speak to you guys soon. Oh, yes, <laughs> quick one. Fourth day of tra fifth day of training today. <laughs> we are slowly getting back into it. Okay, I'll speak to you guys soon. Bye bye now.